Hello, it's Jeffrey. I hope you're well. Now we're gonna have no glare. Not that I can see the screen. <laughs> Don't worry, I can see everything else. Um, I figured since I did yesterday, since it's the 21st and it's Leo season, I thought I would uh, do four readings of the um, elements. So air, fire, water, earth, and naturally I'm gonna begin with fire. I was waiting for the sunlight and uh, yeah, I know there's a shadow, but it's a normal natural shadow. If the shadow starts doing something else, let me know. So welcome to Red Color Tarot. Please like, like subscribe, ring the bell. And I'm looking into having someone do my YouTube marketing because making the videos is enough for me. In any case, um, I think we're gonna begin with fire being that it's creative and it's Leo season and uh, the sun is certainly shining today. So I'm gonna do a three card reading. Shuffling away, it's very humid, so the card's very sticky. Okay, cut, and away we go. First card, Queen of Pentacles, Queen of Wands, aha, there we go. So. Let's talk about them. <clears throat> well, you have two queens, so it's, uh, it's a feminine energy. So it's creative, it's nurturing. Uh, you, know, you know, the second I put them down, it's really about combining these two energies. So, the Queen of Pentacles, what's she about? Well, the Queen of Pentacles is, uh, is a very fair-minded queen. She, um, she's generous, but not to a fault. So she's giving and nurturing. She's like a good mother. So a good mother says, you can have cookies, but you can't eat the whole jar, right? You can have cookies. Cookies are lovely. I made the cookies. You're welcome to have the cookies, but limit it to three or four. You can't have the entire jar. So she's very fair-minded. She's giving and nurturing. She's a smart businesswoman. So she won't invest in something that doesn't have a profit. She won't invest in something that um, that doesn't make any sense. She won't waste her time, her energy, her uh, nurturing on something that doesn't make any sense. It's just not who she is. Just not who she is. You can't get one over on her, okay? The second queen that comes up is the fiery redhead. And she is um, feisty, fiery, creative, ready to get on with the project. So with her balancing, if, the, if you combine these two, you know, maybe I'm talking to somebody who has earth and fire in them. Maybe, you know, you're a Leo with a Virgo rising. Maybe you're a Sagittarius with a, with a Capricorn moon or something to that effect. Maybe not. Maybe you're complete water and you're just watching this because you like my hat. I don't know. Um, so it's about having that creative energy, but um, funneling it, channeling it, um, using your head as well as your creativity. And what that leads to, da, 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 da. this is why I don't make music videos, is a contemplation of what you 
have planted. So putting those two energies together, as opposed to being one or the other, as opposed to just being business, 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 or as opposed to just being creative, 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 I think I'm talking to myself here, to tell you the truth. Um, I, I have quite a lot of uh, planets in fire. I'm not a fire sign, but I have, uh, there's a lot of fire in Um It's about putting those two things together. It's a little bit similar to yesterday. You know, but yesterday, when I did the uh, two of pentacles, was about combining energy. This is still, this is about combining energy. So it's about using your creativity, getting, you know, an idea, but tempering it. You know, it's like, well, I want to be, I want to paint, right? So uh, you don't have to rent a studio. You don't have to buy the most expensive paint. You know, you don't need a model. Like, you know, pull it in a little bit. Maybe draw something first. Maybe um, instead of a model, use something that's in your apartment or um, find a picture and try to emulate that or try to get the feeling of that. And um, you don't need the most, you know, sable brushes. You don't, not today, maybe next week. Um, so this is the beginning of a journey. This is very much the beginning of a journey. So when you're beginning things, you're learning as you go. You're learning as you go. So if you, if you bring in the energy of practicality, and the energy of creativity, then you're gonna have something and say, okay, where am I going with this? You know, like I planted my trees, I'm waiting for them to give to bear fruit. And, you know, that's a good thing to, to be, you know, it's like, well, maybe I should plant, um, I, I know nothing about trees, I know nothing about orchards, but let's say you have room to plant three trees and they could be three pecans or three apples, let's just say. And um, the market for apples, say, is much bigger than the market for pecans. Well, there you go. Or it's easier to grow a certain tree over another. Or it will bear fruit quicker than the other. Those are the kind of things that are smart to think about. So, I'll give you an example from my own life because that's what I do. I uh, I do this, and um, and I love doing it. But I had to diversify in order to um, be more appealing to more people. So I started making masks. I I have um, experience with making T-shirts. I started painting T-shirts. So. I'm still making and I'm still being creative, but I'm also being practical because, um, you know, even though the scarves are beautiful, not everybody wants a scarf. Not everybody wants a scarf. Everybody wants a t-shirt, you know. Everybody has 40 or 50 t-shirts in their, uh, or 30 t-shirts in their uh, drawers. And, you know, after a while, they get old, they get holes, they get stains, and it's like you need a new t-shirt. So, and it's, it's more appealing to more people because it's less expensive, and um, everybody wears t-shirts. Everybody. Even people who don't wear t-shirts wear t-shirts. Right? Uh, and masks are, you know, extremely practical. So... That's a good example of how to combine the energy. I'm still creative, but I'm practical at the same time. Like I can make money on it. Hmm. I remember when I was in school, um, I went to a fashion school. And at that time, I guess, I think it was Gautier, 
Boutier started doing perfume. And, you know, I'm sure he was paid a lot of money. And he, you know, he didn't produce the perfume, but he probably said, yeah, I like the smell. I don't like that smell. Let's put these together. Or maybe the chemist said, well, you know, if you like the rose base, it works with uh, spice. Say, I used to make perfume. It was tremendous fun. Very expensive little habit, but tremendous fun. And, um, you know, so there were these, um, what do you call it, journalists coming by. They were like, oh, as a fashion student, do you think that Gautier sold out because, you know, now it's perfume. It's like, if you can make a million dollars a year just to put your name on something with perfume, okay, and it can um, fuel your being able to make whatever you want, right, in terms of clothing, and you don't have to worry about, well, I really want to use these feathers, but I can't use those feathers because they're too expensive, and I have to use these other feathers, which are kind of like not real, and they don't have the same feathery quality or the length or whatever it is, the color. You know, is he selling out? So I said to the journalist, I said, is this really what you wanted to report on, or did you want to write a book? You know, is there something wrong with being creative with your creativity in order to move forward and in order to have a sort of base? You know, for me, if I just painted all day, I think I'd be a little bored. And if I read Tarot all day, I'd also be a little bored. So I already painted some t-shirts and now it's time to do a video. And do I appeal to everyone? No. If your job and if your um, and if your um, end game is to appeal to everyone, <laughs> then you need to become a god so that you can have apple trees and pecan trees, and wildflowers, and bees, you know. Um, you can only do what you can do. And know your strength, and use your strength, practically, to serve yourself and to serve others. That is my humble, <laughs> capital H, advice. Anyway, this is, um, the new moon reading for the fire signs, i.e. Leo, uh, Sagittarius, and Aries. Don't get offended that I said Aries last. Don't be offended. It's just, it's Leo season, and then I went through the calendar, and Sagittarius, I mean, I could have gone the other way, but it just, you know, it, there's, a, there's a cycle. In any case, um, blessings to you. So use your creativity, use it wisely, and uh, within two weeks, you're going to be more clear. You know, you're going to be able to contemplate and decide where you want to move forward. Now I'm going to put on my glasses so that I can end the video. God bless.